Hello, today I'm going to talk about how you can update a NAR file in Minify Java Agent. I'm going to use property update, asset push and manifest refresh features during the demo. Let me show you what is the current setup in my environment. As you can see, I have a NAR demo agent class with three agents. In the bottom left corner, you can see the edge events. So here we can monitor the C2 operation state during the demo. On the top right corner, you can see the separated terminal window for each of my agents. And in the bottom right corner, you can see a short cheat sheet, so you can easily follow what are the upcoming steps, what we need to execute. Let me show you what is the current flow we have. First, we generate a flow file and we add a custom flow file attribute NAR demo ID. This came from a small update in the boot strap script on the agent side because we want to identify the source of the flow file so I export an environment variable in each and every agent. After that we are going to move the flow file property to the flow file content and at last we are going to save the file to the local file system. Let's publish it and see how it works. After a few seconds, it should be available. So it works for all three agents. Let's imagine a new business requirement uh, arrived to our team that we need to save to Google Cloud Storage this data and not just for the local file system. First, we check the available process source. And as you can see, no Google specific processor is available. The root cause of this is that uh, EFM and the Java agent came come with the standard NAR bundle and that doesn't contain any cloud provider specific processors, but other bundles has and this is the point where nor update going to save us okay the first step we need to gather the nor files one way is to gather these nor files from a public repository or you can build your own nor file i uploaded them to s3 so th this will be the source of our asset push the next step you have to prepare your AWS credential and I already did this behind the scene. And next we are going to update the asset directory to extension because extension folder is the default value where the Java agent looking for new extensions. And if I place our new assets in that directory, it will be automatically loaded without any additional user interaction. So let's go to the dashboard select our agent class and edit the configuration. And let's update it. Okay, the next step is going to be the asset push. I'm going to use Swagger in, to execute this operation. So I already prepared uh, the payload and I start to execute the asset push. In the meanwhile, let's go through the payload. So first you can define what uh, will be the file name on the agent of your asset. The second one is the source where EFM is looking for the, the new asset. And after it download to the EFM, it will distribute to the agent. With the next property, you can force the download. And in the custom property section, you can define your AWS credentials. And as you can see, I use a session token. So it's a temporary, it gives me a temp temporary access. Let's wait a few more seconds. In the meanwhile, we start to monitor the log file on the agent side. And there you go, the asset start. Asset update started on the agent side, is downloaded to the extensions folder, and the auto load triggered here. 
And as you can see, there is a warning message, which said that there is a required dependency to GCP NOR file, and it's NIFI GCP service API NOR. I already have prepared another payload for that dependency. Let me execute this one as well. It should be much faster because it's a smaller NOR file. Yep, it's also success. And here you can see the autoload triggers again. And in this case, it was success. And you can see the two different NOR files are loaded as well. Okay, we are done with the asset push and the next step is the manifest refresh. Let's go to our canvas and in the action menu the refresh manifest uh, feature is available. Let's trigger it. In the pop-up window you can see what will be the difference with the new manifest. So you can see we will get new processors and a new controller service. Let's do the refresh and after that we can check for the new processor. And there you go. It is our new put GCS object processor. So let's connect it to our existing flow. Let's check what are the required stuff we need to do. First we need to create a GCP credential provider. Let's go to the service menu and configure it. I'm going to use a file-based configuration. So I just put it here and our credential service is ready. Let's wait a few more sec and it will be available in the drop-down. Yep, there you go. Okay, and let's set our target bucket as well. We comply. And yes, I need to auto terminate the two relation. And our flow is valid. Let's check quickly our output bucket. And as you can see, it's empty. So let's publish our updated flow. And after a few seconds, I think we can move to the output directory and check the new files. Yep, there you go. Let's quickly open them. And as you can see, this file came from agent 3, this one from agent 2, and this one from agent 1. So the NOR update was successful and we managed to utilize the new processor. And at last, if you are done with the NOR update, uh, you have to set back to your original config the asset directory in order to make sure that it won't cause any side effect if you update other assets than the NOR files. I set back to the original config, so to the asset folder and just to recap so the crucial part is to gather your NOR files you have to set up your AWS credential if your data source for the assets is S3 you have to set the asset directory to your extension folder do the asset push you have to refresh the manifest in the design view, and after that the new processor are available for use. So that's all what I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching this video.